Mark Coley here live from AT&T Stadium in Arlington, home of the Dallas Cowboys for this Saturday uh, night game. Our Wildcats, it's round four, and our Wildcats are one of five teams left in this 5A Division I high school playoffs. Uh, right now we're up on, it's halftime, and we're up on Manville 11 to seven, so a good first half for the Wildcats. Nice to be at the lead here at halftime. Still two quarters of football left, but nobody expected that from the Cats, and especially uh, especially Manville. But at this time, in the booth with me tonight, right here for the next few minutes, I've got uh, Temple Independent School District Superintendent Dr. Battershell. And so, uh, Dr. Battershell, first of all, welcome to the booth, and thank you for being here with us for the halftime. Thank you. Yeah. I, this is a whole different view up here. <laughs> Isn't it? <laughs> well, I think we'll have it posted on Inside Wildcat Football so the fans can see that view if they haven't already. What do you think about tonight's game? Well, you know, it's uh, I've been around for a long time. I've seen a lot of football games, a lot of teams play, but it is just ultra cool to see a Cinderella team. And this is a Cinderella team. Yeah. Well, I'll tell you, you know, your sports background, if anybody didn't know this, uh, sports are nothing new to you. You, Texas Tech athlete, well, why don't you tell us what, just well, so the fans know that you. No, I, I'm not that much of an athlete, but I played some sports in my time, and that was basketball. But I'm much, much older now and on to other things. <laughs> okay. Well, I mean, just wanted to make sure everybody knew, though, that you were a gamer. You played some, you some I, I played stuff there. Some. And, and the other thing that is, is that I just got to say, and, and I've heard a lot of the, uh, you know, when the whole thing came along, since you've been superintendent here, you know, you've kind of got a reputation of just knowing how to pick coaches. And I'm even going to go back, go back to Salado. One of your, one of your coaches that you picked when you brought Jeff Cheatham to Salado, he was in round four of the playoffs today. He, they lost to the Woodlands at McLean Stadium, but what a powerful season they, that, in a job that he's done there at Round Rock. And when you, when he was with you at Salado, y'all went all the way to the semifinals one we year. Did. We and, did. and not for a really bum ref call. You probably win that game and play for right. the state title and win it. Right. Um, and so, but you brought Jeff Cheatham there. You brought Coach Spradlin to Temple, right? And mm-hmm. uh, and then and then now, you know, you pick you, you take a guy that Coach Stewart, who has never head coached before, and and had some big names into Temple to. And, and pick him. So, so hey, give us the secret here. What, do, what, what, what is it? What's the recipe you look well, for? Well, I don't want to give the secret, oh, Mark, right. because then other superintendents will pick you're, it up. You're right. We'll talk. But, we'll talk about the real secret. But no, give it, tease us a little then. Well, I tell you, you know, Jeff. It was just such a pleasure to hire Jeff. And um, when he came in my office, he brought his playbook with him. And it wasn't just the playbook for on the field. It was the playbook off the field. And he talked about how he was going to work with the academics of our students and the behavior of our students and then on the field. And it was in that order. And I thought, this is a gentleman that can lead. And then when Mike Spradlin, when I hired Mike, he came in bigger than life. You know, <laughs> I remember when Lake Seastrunk was our star and we had all these coaches from all over the place coming in and trying to recruit him. And you didn't even have to know who they are, but they walked in a room and you knew they were something special. Uh, well, when Mike Spradlin came in the room, you knew he was something special. And then when Scott Stewart came in the room, he had his playbook. So I guess that's the thing I look for. But actually, you know, I don't know that I look for something different in a coach than I look in other people. I look for in other people. I look for one that has kids at heart, number one. Number two, they're really honest and you can see it coming through them. And the third thing is when they walk in the room, they're bigger than life. I mean, you know beyond a doubt that they're a leader and that they can control a situation and do what's best for, for your kids. Mm, yeah, well, and, and, and we owe Coach Spradlin and you a big thanks because we've got a coach in Coach Stewart. He's something yes, else. Do. And for yes, Mike Spradlin to you know see him and then for you to spot and be able to say that's our next head coach when you were looking at the resumes of the people that were in your office yeah. interviewing for that. And a lot of us out there, Dr. Battershell, were saying, is she crazy? <laughs> and, and you know what? Hey, hey, you were right. You were right. So well done on that. You know, uh, a, a long time, I mean, a woman that I know you know, Marilyn Hoster, just passed yes. away here. Yes. She actually passed away November 17th on my birthday. I won't forget that. Mm-hmm. Um, and, and she was superintendent when I was at Temple High School, mm-hmm. and I was got to have a number of meetings with her as, as the president of the student council in those years. goes back a few. Thought so much of her. I was talking with Dr. Hancock um, mm-hmm. at, at her uh, at her funeral, mm-hmm. and one of the things he talked about was how they always had a strategy and a belief that going deep in the playoffs in football correlated with just other good <laughs> things happening. Now he told me there was even some data and things that they had looked at about you know, with, but but he was saying it wasn't just about football, but but how it impacts the whole community. Do you have any thoughts on that or perspective about athletic programs when they do better and how that spills over into? The, the classroom or a community or just any 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 thoughts with that? Well, you know, you have kind of three 
big programs in high school. You have your career tech program, you have your athletics, and you have your fine arts. And, and all three of those programs involve probably 90% of our kids overall. And um, if, if those programs do well, so goes the day, so goes the semester, so goes the year. And so, you know, I don't know that it's, it's just football. Uh, I think certainly their football attracts probably a larger crowd than the others do. But all three of those programs, you've got to have great leaders, and they've got to know where they're going, and they've got to motivate kids. And, and we've got all three of them. And, you know, tonight what I see, you know, I see a band out there right now that is just a wow, an absolute wow. We've had our theater arts in Dallas for the last few days. And they're up here on a special, I mean, that's a special deal what Absolutely. they're doing in Dallas right now, Miss Tollison. And we have one going to international competition after that. So we have students just on all levels, career tech. We have 88% of our kids that are in some type of a career tech course. You know, those are the things that make, make school districts and they make kids successful. Yeah, well, I mean, you know, you, when you when you talk about those, you know, three buckets or three areas mm-hmm. that you have, yeah. there, there's, when you look at, I mean, like you said, we're looking at our band out here. And, right, and, and magnificent. The, the, the list of, of, of talented musicians that have come out of our program and are being recognized around the country, uh, the theater, and the, I mean, they won a state championship. Right. Uh, in, and that was last school last year spring. with Miss Tallis. Mm-hmm. I mean, that's, that's a big deal. It's a big and, deal. And then, of course, the bond election coming up and the approval and passing of that, and you right. already see these projects. Right. Some of them are already complete, and others are breaking ground on. I mean, it's a good time for TISD. And I'll tell you, on, on the bond projects, there's going to be some really cool ones come up because the Career Tech Center at the high school, it will start construction this summer, and then fine arts probably within about a half year after that. And it's going to completely change how the sky, high school looks, and it will probably change how those programs work because they'll have facilities that match their expertise. Okay. Okay. Um, uh, Johnny Rogers, one of our offensive linemen, mm-hmm. you know, I, I think his mom is an administrator at the she high school, is. isn't he? Uh-huh. Uh, you know, he's trying to get in. I don't know if he's been accepted yet, but I know he's on. He's, he's in the final rounds of going to MIT. Something about Temple High School being the first high school to do the Google certification. That, could you tell us about t- tell tell us about that? I've just heard a little bit here and there about it. It's a it's a pretty big deal. It's a huge deal. It's first in the United States, and you know I'd like to say I know a whole lot about it, but actually I ride on the coattails of Lou Ann Hughes, who's our <laughs> technology director, and and she really got us started in that path. And we had done it with uh, adults, and we had students that said, "Well, why not us?" And so Lou Ann said, "Well, Dr. Patterson, why not them?" And I I said. Luann, you think it's the right thing to do? She goes, absolutely. And so the students went through that certification. Again, first one's the United States to get that certification. It's a real model for the U.S. Mm. You know, so many things under your leadership, Dr. Battershell, with our school district. Um, another one is the Temple Education Foundation. Yeah. Recently acknowledged Kiefer Marshall, who, by the way, played in two state championships yeah, when he was a he Wildcat. Did. He and did. He's, a, he's one of the families that has had three generations, uh, Kiefer, his son, and his grandsons. Uh, Rob and Pat uh, played, uh, you know, for the Cats as well. But the uh, Temple Education Foundation, uh, you, you know, my wife, Jean, has worked mm-hmm. a lot with you guys and the whole board there and everything on that piece. You've raised hundreds of thousands of dollars. You really resurrected that Temple Education Foundation. Could you talk a little bit about why is that so important and what are you trying to accomplish with that? You know, I think a foundation, you know, people think of it as something that raises funds or provides scholarships or stuff like that. But it's more than that, Art. You know, I think those education foundations, they groom future board members because a lot of times school board members begin as foundation members and they learn that they've got some leadership skills and then they think, oh, I could be on the school board too. So we've had some school board members that have migrated through that path and the other one is i think it is the ultimate connection with your community because we have i think 32 33 on our foundation board and they represent all facets of of temple and when they come into those meetings they truly talk about where they come from and reach great decisions because of that and what i'm the most proud of is it is a board that stands on its own i mean i am one member and if i miss a meeting i don't know that anyone cares uh, the other board that I'm really proud of is the Wildcat Mentor Board. You know, we have uh, 205 community members, Art, that are one-on-one mentors with our students in the school district. They have their own board, and I guess there's 15 or 20 on that board. Again, a standalone board, powerful, motivated, there for kids, just incredible. Well, I'll tell you, Dr. Battershell, I don't think it's any 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 surprise to anybody you being nominated for Superintendent of the Year um, and, and coming down to, to one of the two finalists on that. And I think it was runner up where we landed on, but we you know that we think, <laughs> but that must have been a rigged deal. But hey, the best deal in Central Texas 
you know, is Temple ISD. Our education, our athletics, our diversity, our finance, the whole tax. I mean, even, you know, people forget about tax base and things like that. And, and I mean, we've just so sh- and economically strong. You know, that matters when you're not yes. having, you know, you're not having to run around trying to buy more portable buildings and all that. Man, we've right. got good schools and we're even getting them better. And, and the programming for our kids and, and the CTE, the, those career programs, the, the IB program. I mean, you just have really done a phenomenal job with the school district. And, um, you know, I know this much. Uh, people like Marilyn Hoster, when they see that work and, they, and they're looking, they're saying, hey, you, do, you did good. And you're doing well, good. Now, uh, Marilyn, <laughs> That's probably not the right grammar. I'm in trouble. That's all right. Marilyn will get you later. Uh, well, you know, Marilyn, we talked so many times. And the thing that Marilyn gave me was just unquantified support. And uh, even things I know she probably didn't agree with. I mean, people operate differently, but she still always supported. And I think that's a model for all of us when when we retire. But uh, but I'll say, you know, I'm just one of a whole, a big family. And each of those family members have to do their parts. And that's what folks do. They do their parts. And then you see what happens because of that. Well, Dr. Battershell, you've created, you know, uh, quite a community here under your leadership with our TISD. And just thank you for all the work that you do. Let's get back to rooting these cats on for the second half. You ready for that? I am ready for a second uh, hey, half. Let's, and let's and go, are you ready for round five? Let's, let's find get, the glass let's, slipper. Let's do it. <laughs> let's do it, Dr. Battershell. Thank, thank you, you so much. Thank you.